Good day everyone. Today's topic will be focusing on teachers' academic qualifications and experiences. In my almost 20 years of teaching, I have seen how teachers influence learners, how teachers make or break learners, how teachers help students achieve their goal, how teachers made their student fail in their subjects. So therefore, we teachers, we really, really have to prepare ourselves academically and of course with our experiences because that will be a great help in molding our youth, in molding our learners, in making our students prepare their lives for their future and therefore as teachers there is a need for us to be prepared academically and of course our experiences that will help in making the qualifications the academic qualifications more reliable more acceptable because of the combination of both your academics and your experience Teachers' academic qualifications and experiences may be learned during our pre-service and, of course, in-service. Now, when we say pre-service, that's before you become part of the teaching profession. While in-service, you are already part of the teaching profession. In the pre-service, that is preparation to becoming a teacher. While when you are in service, practicing your being a teacher. Under the pre-service, you need to consider what course that you are going to take. It could be elementary, if you are planning to teach in the elementary education or elementary years. It could be secondary, if you are planning to teach secondary learners or secondary students. You can also teach in the early childhood or the uh, kindergarten, or you can also teach in the special education. So that is part of the pre-service that you need to consider what course to take because that is preparing you academically, that you have both the uh, content and the pedagogy, which, is, which are needed in teaching. So that's part of the pre-service. And also, you need to consider other things like um, trainings and seminars, which is part also of the pre-service. That's why you do some trainings on pedagogy, trainings on strategy, training on writing um, exams or tests, training on preparing uh, tables of specifications. And then you need also to take the uh, licensure examination for teachers. These are all part of the pre-service education that will make you relevant in the in-service if you are prepared in the pre-service. Pre-service is our practice, while in-service is our actual that's the application of what we had practiced during the pre-service. And that can be seen in the in-service. So let's see what are those things that we need to do in the pre-service or the things that we need to prepare under pre-serve education. Well, under pre-service education, as I was telling you a while ago, you need to have a bachelor's degree. Now, having a bachelor's degree will be your passport. That will be your diploma. That will be your proof that uh, you are indeed have that academic preparation. So, bachelor's degree means taking bachelor in elementary education for those in the elementary bachelor of secondary education for the secondary bachelor of early childhood education 
bachelor in special education or a units thereof. So, preparing yourselves academically means taking your course seriously. That in order to finish the course, you need to buckle up. You need to do the things that you previously are not doing. If you are very lax when you are taking your bachelor's degree, you need to as set aside your relaxation. Instead, you need to focus. You need to give your 100% effort in order for you to achieve your goal. As we had discussed during our vision mission setting, you need to look forward into finishing the course. You need to look forward into achieving uh, the course because that is your passport. And when you already have in your hand the diploma, the certificate, you can say that thank you. It's after all the midnight uh, burning of candles, after all the uh, relaxation which are set aside, here I already have that certificate. So that's the fruit, uh, fruit of our uh, endeavor of our labor, which you can say, well, I already have the certificate. Then at least basically you have the academic qualifications. And then in the pre-service too, you need to undergo some trainings and seminars. As in the previous slide I was telling you, Trainings and seminars will prepare you, will equip you to becoming a very good practitioner in the future. Trainings and seminars are sometimes uh, sponsored by the higher education institution or the tertiary school. Sometimes it is also partner with other um, giving bodies or sponsoring organization. Like, of course, when it comes to teacher education, the association of deans or the COD-T5, sometimes they are um, sponsoring trainings and seminars for would-be teachers. They are uh, giving us uh, lectures on how to become a good teacher, how to have a very good strategies of teaching, how to manage classroom, how to become an effective teacher, so these are some of the things that we are undergoing during trainings and seminars which are needed in order for us to become prepared in the experience that we have because our experience as teacher our experience as um, during the pre-service education will lead us to becoming more uh, prepared when we are already in the practice of the profession. And of course, you need also to undergo or to pass the licensure examination for teachers, which is given by the Professional Regulation Commission pursuant to Republic Act 7836 or the Teachers Professionalization Act of the Philippines. And under that, it is the Professional Regulations Commission who provide the licensure examination for teacher or most commonly known to us as LED. So these are part of the pre-service education. These are part of the things that you need to do, that you need to pass in order to becoming a teacher because these things are preparation. That's why it is called pre-service education. Now, when you are already in service, some of the things that are being done for newly hired, for example, a newly hired teacher is given an induction program. Induction program in the sense that you are inducted in the profession. You are given an intro or you are being introduced to the colleagues, to the profession. So that is why it is called an induction program. There are so many uh, kind of induction programs that is being given to newly hired teachers or newly hired uh, practitioners of the teaching profession. Sometimes uh, an induction program includes a 
it could be also a training or a seminar, but more on how to become a newly, as a newly hired teacher, you are given a uh, intro on the code of ethics for teachers while you are already in the practice of the profession. Also, you are being given a lecture or seminar training on how to become an effective teacher. That is part of the induction program. You are also oriented on the professional growth for teacher. So that could be part of the induction program. Induction program is your uh, intro, is your passage to a full-blown teaching profession. That is where uh, practitioners of the teaching profession give you lectures on how to manage classroom, how to uh, manage temper, those are the things that you need to undergo in the induction program. And many induction programs are considered effective in, the, in setting up the newly hired teacher and in making them at ease of the profession because of the induction program. Another in-service activity is the inset. Inset, that's why it's called inset because it is in service training. In the pre service, you have those trainings and seminars also, but it is more, it is weightier um, in the practice when you are already in the practice. There are a lot of in service training that is being sponsored in order for the teachers to gain more knowledge, more information of the profession. So in-service training is done when the teacher is already in the practice of the profession. So that's what we call as inset. Then there are also professional development program. Example is scholarship. There are some teachers availing scholarship that falls under professional development program. It could be an outside of the country scholarship or it could also be uh, within the country a local scholarship that is being sponsored by an institution. There are a lot of professional development programs that are being offered now to teachers and it is just but up for the teachers to grab what particular professional development program that is fit or that is needing for their profession that is needed for their profession. So they can select in a lot of professional development program. And as a practicing professional teacher, it is up to them to see to it that uh, what they learn from that uh, particular professional development program is cascaded to the learners, shared to the fellow teachers and of course reported to the higher apps because that is part of your development program. When you avail any scholarship, there is always that what we call return service. You need to return for the service that has been given to you in exchange and that you have go you are going to continuously uh, practice in the profession which the scholarship have given to you. So that's part of the professional development program. So when you are already in service, you need to undergo induction program, in-service training, and of course, so many professional development program. Also, uh, you need to consider where you are planning to teach because uh, teachers' academic qualifications and experiences are sometimes uh, different in qualifications and experience if you are in the private schools or if you are in the public schools. Why there is a need for you to know that? Because um, hiring entails also a mental qualification it means to say that you need also to consider other applicants 
qualifications because uh, there are some private school which have a very lax qualification standard there are also some private school especially private schools which have already maintained their record academic records in the um, society they set up a higher qualification standards which only few could be able to meet while in public schools there is a uniform qualification standard for example if you are planning to apply in the department of education there is a uniform qualification standard for all applicants from north to south from east to west so that is why i am telling you you need to look into and you need to consider into whether you are planning to apply in the private school or you are planning to apply in the public school because uh, there are qualification standards that you need to follow in order to pass the hiring guidelines of a private school or of the public school. Now, in private schools, usually, you will be issued a contract. So a contract could be as short as six months, especially those who will be teaching in the senior high school or those who are teaching in the college. So there is an issuance of a contract or it could be as uh, long as three years, two years, one year. So contract is contract that binds the parties there are some private school who require that the applicant is a passer of the licensure examination for teachers under republic act 7836 but there are also some private school who considered uh, them as para teachers and that they do not require passing of the licensure examination for teachers as required under RA 7836 or the Teachers Professionalization Act. So it depends upon the private school that is hiring or that are hiring as to the requirement of whether or not the applicant is a passer of the licensure examination for teacher. There are also some private school that uh, requires training and seminars while there are private schools who do not require trainings and seminars. It is not a prerequisite to hiring. So that's why you need to consider the hiring guidelines of a particular private school because there are some private school who are not very strict with so many requirements but there are also some private school which require a higher qualification standard for their teacher applicants while for those who are applying in the public schools and those who are already in the public school we are very very sure that uh, we become teachers in the public schools because we are holder of RA 7836 license or the licensure examination for teachers. That's one basic requirement in order to be hired as public school teacher that you are a licensed professional teacher given by the Professional Regulations Commission or the PRC who is tasked, whose task is to provide licensure examination for teachers aside from that uh, public school teachers are regulated or um, regulated by the circulars issued by the civil service commissions or the guidelines coming from the csc the csc being the central a personnel agency of the Republic of the Philippines, all appointments in the government, even appointments of public school teachers pass through the scrutiny of the civil service commissions that uh, a public school teacher cannot be hired without 
passing the professional exam given by the PRC. And also, there are DepEd orders for those who are applying in the public schools. You need to be guided by DepEd order number 7, series 2015. DepEd order 22, series of 2015. 7 and 22 are applicable for applicants from kindergarten to grade 10. While DepEd Order Number 3 series of 2016 is applicable to teacher applicants in the senior high school. So there are two, actually three different DepEd Orders on hiring public school teachers, which we are going to discuss later so that you will be guided, you will be uh, prepared enough if you are planning to apply in the public schools. Now, as I was telling you a while ago, most of the private schools issued contracts to their applicants. It means to say that when they hire an applicant for a teaching profession in the particular private school, they are being bind by the contracts that are being issued or uh, that is being issued to the applicant and that contract serves it serves as a law between the parties between the hiring school and the applicant so there under the constitution article 3 of the 1987 constitution it says that no law impairing the obligation of contracts shall be passed. So it means to say that even our very own fundamental law, the Constitution, is respecting the obligation arising from the contract. So a teacher who is issued a contract by the hiring private school, that teacher that hired teacher must abide to that contract. And likewise, the hiring institution, the hiring public school must also abide with that contract. So that contract will be a law to both of them that will serve as guide to both of them. So that's contract. Now, under RA 7836, as I was telling you a while ago, this is the Philippine Teachers Professionalization Act of 1994. Before the licensure exam for teacher, which uh, are uh, administered, which is administered by the Civil Service Commission, but with the passage of RA 7836, it is now with the PRC as a newly created uh, body under Article 7836, which is run by a commission, and that uh, all examinations except uh, bar exam are undertaken by the Professional Regulations Commission. So what does RA 7836 states about um, passing? So no person shall practice or offer to practice the teaching profession in the Philippines or be appointed as teacher to any position calling for a teaching profession without having previously obtained a valid certificate of registration and a valid professional license from the commission as stated in Article 4, Section 27, RA 7836. So, it is required and it is incumbent upon individual applicant for a teaching profession to pass the licensure examination for teachers because you cannot practice or offer to practice teaching profession in the Philippines or 
be appointed as teacher to any position without having previously obtained a valid certificate of registration and of course a valid professional license from the PRC. However, there is a law RA10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 which provide that there is a temporary hiring of science and mathematics teachers for those uh, applicants without license. However, they are only required to pass within five years in order to become permanent teachers or in order for them to get the item which they are using temporarily. If they fail to pass the licensure examination for teachers within the five-year period, they can no longer be uh, reappointed as temporary teacher because that will be in violation if the same will be done again of RA10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. So it means to say if you are hired, for example, a senior high school teacher and you do not have that license or certificate of uh, registration, you are given five years. Each year it has uh, two examinations for uh, teachers for let so therefore you are given 10 times 10 takes in order to pass it so that you can be able to get the item that is you are being used for quite a long time so that is uh, under RA10533 so there are some um, math, science, and other uh, highly technical subjects whose teachers are not licensed professional teachers because they are being allowed by Republic Act 10533. Then, of course, we have the CSC Circular. One of those is the one of the CSC circulars issued is the Omnibus Rules on Appointments and Other Human Resources Actions or the Ora Ora 2017. And uh, under this Ora Ora, provided that um, a permanent appointment. So look, you can be given a permanent appointment in the government when what? you meet all the qualification requirements of the position to which he or she is being appointed to, including the appropriate eligibility in accordance with the provisions of law, rules, and standards promulgated in pursuance thereof. So it means to say you cannot be given a permanent appointment in the government unless stated in the screen that you have meet all the qualification requirements of the position so including what eligibility so you must pass the licensure examination for teachers in accordance with the provisions of law rules and standards promulgated in pursuance thereof so see that's why you need to pass you need to have an eligibility in order for you to be given this particular um, permanent item. How about a temporary item or appointment? A temporary appointment is issued to a person who meets the education. So you have the education as well as the experience and training requirements for the position to which he or she is being appointed to except for the appropriate eligibility. So you all have the um, education, experience, and training, but you lack one thing, and that is you do not have the required 
eligibility for the practice of the profession. You have not yet passed the licensure examination for teacher. So it means to say that uh, you can be hired, but it is a temporary appointment only and not a permanent appointment. So as I was telling you a while ago under RA10533, you can be hired, but it will be for temporary appointment only. How about a substitute? A substitute is being um, applied to those whose appointment when the regular incumbent of a position is temporarily unable to perform the duties of the position. So because the incumbent, the person holding the position, cannot or unable to perform the duties of the position, then there is a need to issue a substitute appointment. When is substitute appointment usually done? One, when the incumbent is on an approved leave of absence. Example of an approved leave of absence is maternity leave. A maternity leave is equivalent to 105 days. So therefore, a, an employee, a woman employee who got pregnant and then who applied for maternity leave is given to a total of 105 days. So he will be, or she will be rather, she will be absent for 105 days. If she is a classroom teacher, who will handle now the class? So there is a need to hire a substitute so that there will be somebody who will be the one to handle the class while he is on absence or if the particular incumbent is under suspension so he was suspended for example for three months for six months then who will handle the class so there is a need to issue a substitute appointment in order for the suspended person or for the suspended employee to have a substitute or when on a scholarship, when it's on a scholarship grant, sometimes uh, there is no uh, incumbent because especially if it is in a foreign country, so nobody will handle the class the teacher is handling. So we need to hire a substitute or on a secondment from this uh, office brought to another office or there is a need to hire a substitute in order for the functioning office to continue. So that's all for the teacher's academic qualifications and, uh, and uh, experiences. If you have further question, you can just drop in our, in the message of the, in the comment section of the video so I can return to you or I can answer you of the query or of any questions that you would like to be clarified about. Thank you very much to all of you.